What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the Cloud Slayer Podcast. Um, today, I'm joined with a special guest here, um, old friend of mine, used to be a bestie, um, Amy Hoyland. What up? How's it going? Um, today, we're we're gonna share a little bit of Amy's story here. Um, she's been through hardships, just like everybody else, right? And she she felt like she wanted to share, so I'm more than willing to have that happen, and more than an honor. So, um, uh, without further ado, um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? What do you want to know? I don't know. Where are you born at? Bemidji. Bemidji, Minnesota. Is that where you were uh, raised, or did you get raised somewhere else? Got raised in Thief River. Yeah. How was that? It was all right. Yeah. Was uh, From there, where did you go, you know? From there, I went to Ada. Ada Borup? Yep. Yeah, what'd you do over there? How long were you there for? Two years. Two years, yeah. Middle school? Yeah, I was for eighth and part of my freshman year. Yeah, how was that? You make a lot of friends. Yeah, I, just, I played basketball, choir, double dribbling, or what? Fuck no. I see no skills, man. You can't be lying. Well, Little be support. <laughs> playing for fun. Be support. You have to be competitive. Yeah, if you're on a team, you kind of have to. I guess that's a given, but I'm not going to grill you too much more on that. Where'd you go from there? From there to Winnie Mac. Yeah, Winnie Mac. What'd you do over there? Just be a normal person? Yeah? Yeah. You get into any drugs or anything? Not there. That was high school, right? Yeah. Did you graduate from there? Yes. Yeah, okay. Then uh, did the drugs pursue right after or soon thereafter? No, no, it was, a, it was quite a bit after. Quite a bit after. What what was it like? Years? No, I was no. more of a drinker at the end of high school than I was in a drug. Yeah, more in a drinking. Um, was that because of like outside influences outside of your mind, I guess, or body? Or no, that was because I was eighteen and mm-hmm. my parents were like cool with that. So, uh, all right, I got you, got you. Um, did you grow up with like around drinking and stuff like that? Yeah, my dad. Yeah. Did uh <laughs> do you think that played a, a role in how you viewed alcohol, I suppose? No, I hated no? it. Always did, but just started doing it just because or what? Just cuz it looked fun, I don't know. Right. Well, I'm dumb. well, right, but well, I mean, sometimes people like do it to get run away from stuff, you know what I mean? But that's yeah, not always the case. Sometimes it's just the fucking but drink. That time it was just that fun. Right. I got you. I got you. And then um, was it ever like a big problem or did that like hit a certain age? Then it was like a problem. It became a problem that summer I started working at MDV. Yeah. It still became a problem. Um, Why would you say or what would you say contributed to that? You know, like throwing fucking... um, well, gas on the flames, if if you will. Boyfriend. I'm sorry, um, we couldn't get any of that. The boyfriend at the time had a lot to do with that, probably. Yeah, how long were you with this fellow uh, before that? Since grad, yeah, since graduation. Yeah, um, where was he at this time? I suppose. His that was his first stint, I believe. So he was in. I want to say Fairball. Yeah. I think. Did you? Did he have a drink problem with you? I suppose, or no, did you drink a lot? Pills. He drank in pop pills. That was his thing. Pop pills. Did you ever uh, do that with him or anything like that? No. No. Just drinking. Just the drinking. Yeah, I got you. I got you. That bad at it until like, I guess I didn't really started working there tell mdv is when you started doing that stuff was and you, you said that this contributed to it right this past uh baby daddy or boyfriend yeah. yeah um in which ways did it play mentally for you and you know in i guess feeling like you had to do that kind of stuff 
I didn't have to. I think it was more the fact that I was... Because usually when he would drink, I always had to babysit him. Yeah. I was never able to really have fun. I right. was always having to take care of his drunk butt. Mm-hmm. So I think when I finally got the taste of being young... Mm-hmm. And I could do what I want. I didn't have somebody being like, oh, but I'm sick. Take care of me. Yeah, I got you, got you. You got to experience that uh, thrill, if you will, I suppose. Yeah. Heck yeah. So, um, when did the... When did those drugs come into play then, those other drugs other than, like, alcohol? You said during MDV time? Okay, so... With you guys, it was only drinking. Mm-hmm. Because I, you know, drink with you guys quite a bit. Right. Yeah. You know, pass out in the bathrooms like you guys like to give me crap for. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's so, something that you live with forever. You know what I mean? It, and he got kicked out of treatment. And I had to, you know, obviously I followed him to East Grand Forks. Mm-hmm. The little ass druggy motel. Yeah. What that Small rooms. Yeah. So within, I think we were there for like two, three months in that motel. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until he brought his other buddy. In. You don't have to name names if you don't want to. So. I'm not naming names, so we're not going to do that. Yeah. So we're just going to say Buddy A. Okay. So, we'll say, we'll, so Buddy A and him, they decided... To, I don't know if they conjured up this idea or how they conjured up this idea, but they said they were going to start selling meth out there. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I want, because Christian was out in the, the room, all I wanted to do was go in the bathroom and smoke a cigarette. Uh huh. We, were, we had one of those smoking rooms back there. Okay. They were all sitting in there smoking whatever the fuck it was. Well, obviously it was meth. We know it was meth. Mm -hmm. they stuck the pipe in my mouth and there was like four or five of them in this tiny ass little bathroom yeah I mean, what what am i gonna do if i don't do it this is kind of the way my brain worked out. if i don't do it what the hell's gonna happen to me you've got five people in there they're all fucking druggies uh -huh. and if you don't do it normally they're gonna and being that math is very sometimes can make people really paranoid yeah they're gonna start looking at you like well you didn't do it you're gonna go snitch you call cops you know? uh -huh. so i guess in that it was more of like the peer pressure aspect oh just do it. <laughs> yeah i got you i got you i think that was i'd only done it like a couple times out there it wasn't like i was heavily using uh-huh and how much is that would you say like multiple times a week or what? No, I don't. They'd smoke more than I would. Uh huh. Way more than I would. I'd maybe only do it with them on occasion. It wasn't like I liked it. Yeah. How much is uh occasion? Would you say? Like I was explaining to you, most people when they're smoking that stuff, they'll sit and they'll smoke it and they'll smoke it until it's nothing but I don't know what they call that resin on the inside of the glass but mm -hmm. they'd smoke it till it's gone residue so i'd only smoke it until i was high or comfortably high and i just leave people alone uh -huh. on meth yeah those motherfuckers on their hand they're the opposite yeah so buddy he would leave you know go find his little screw buddies or what have you and or go to his other friends houses and leave me and idiot alone with our child yeah and he, the one night, had gotten all fucking sorts of paranoid on it. Like, looking out the windows, thinking cops were outside of it. Asking to go through my phone because I he just... Was yeah, sure. Extreme paranoia. Yeah, he was sure I was talking to whoever it was. Thinking right. I was cheating on him or doing this or doing crazy stuff. Yeah, Were you? No. Because and that's a I fact. Well, yeah, I didn't want to die. You ever met that psychopath? No. 
Yeah. I'm also not you, though, so. So I would get pens or whatever freaking weapon he could find, and mm -hmm. I'd have to lay in that bed and not move with items up to my throat. Like a brush like that or the pen? Well, I'm talking about, like, pens or something sharp. This yeah. Is just but while you guys were high on meth? I wasn't high. Yeah. He but was. he was. And how long did you have to sit there for? Well, let's see. Most meth users don't sleep on it, so I'd have to lay there until it was okay to move. Okay. Was that a very long time sometimes? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Were these, these things that he made you do, were they wearing on you mentally and stuff like that? Well, yeah. Yeah. Who wants to deal with being held captive? Right, but um, what kept you there for so long? You know what I mean? Just thought it would change or what? I think a lot of it, but maybe some Stockholm Syndrome. Okay. What would you explain, please? So Stockholm Syndrome, I'll go grab the actual definition. Or... I can just so, say what it was. syndrome is a coping mechanism to a captive or abusive situation. People develop positive feelings towards their captors or abusers over time. Uh -huh. So instead of me thinking that everything he did was bad, I try to be like, oh, well, it's not, it's not as bad as it could be. I probably deserve this. I did it. It's my fault because th that's what they do. Mm -hmm. Blame the person. It's their fault. Yeah. Well, what what person. made you realize otherwise, or did um never really realize it? Yeah, took a lot. Well, you you've been through some other stuff too, right? You said um, sometimes these things would keep you up at night, like some of these instances, um, you know, of whether it be physical abuse or holding you captive or whatever. You know what I mean? Right. Mm hmm. Well, you've seen you've seen some of the ways that he would talk to me when we were living together. Yep. It wasn't always sunshine and rainbows. It was, hey, Amy, guess what? You're a fucking slut. Or you're a dumb cunt. You're a piece of shit mother. Blah, 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 blah. I was just yeah. like that. And I just hear that on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, The night of... Was it? I think it was October 9th. So it was. It was before I came into contact with you guys. So we moved back. So we gotten he'd gotten himself kicked out of our area in East Grand Forks. Because yeah. He was high on drugs while I was visiting my mom at the hospital. So okay. I came back like a mess. So we were good for a couple of weeks when we got back to Winger. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that he was still finding ways of getting meth or still using it. Well, October, so it would have been the evening October 8th into October 9th. Okay. We went and bought a bottle. I feel like, I think it was kinky. We were going to celebrate something that night. <laughs> I'd gotten Christian to lay down. He decided that the bottle wasn't good enough, that he needed to go to the bar. Well, I called the bar a few times. To see, okay, what time are you gonna come back? Da 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 da. Like, you pretty much ditched me. Like, you, you coming mm -hmm. home anytime soon? Right. You know, like, a girlfriend, I'm I'm pissed. You've been gone for hours. Like, come on now. Oh yeah. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be there in a while. Da da da. I don't know if me calling up there is what lit the match that night. Mm -hmm. But when he got back, it was very volatile. Okay. At first, it started with trying to like. We'll just come upstairs and go to bed or whatever. And I was like, no, I'm really set with you. Like, just leave me alone. Like, Christian's upstairs sleeping. Just take your drunk ass, go to bed. Mm -hmm. Well, that wasn't good enough. So he went upstairs first. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll be up there in a couple minutes. I really wasn't planning on it. I really wanted him to pass out. Uh-huh. He comes back down. And pretty much lunges at me and starts pulling my hair. Trying to drag me up the stairs. I'm like, mm -hmm. dude, like, just stop. Okay, I, I get it. We'll go to bed. Whatever. Fine. Mm -hmm. Gets me upstairs and tries to, like, gets me bent over. 
like our couch that we had upstairs and mm-hmm. was trying to like suffocate me into the pillows. Yeah. Okay, well, he's drunk. He's he's stronger than me, but he's not as strong when he was drunk. Yeah. So I, I wiggled. That is coordinated. Yeah. Exactly. So I wiggled my way out of that, and I was like, "You're a fucking psychopath." I ran back down the stairs. That only angered somebody more. So, um, me yelling actually woke up Christian who was sleeping. So he comes downstairs. His dad is telling me, "Hey, you should. You really should either. You know, I think you need to find somewhere else to stay tonight." I was like, well, "Where?" I was like, "I don't have any friends." I was like, "He's made sure of that." I was like, "I have nobody." I was like, "I was like, where am I gonna go?" Mm-hmm. And. He's like, I really think you need to get out of here. I was like, well, exactly my point. I was like, I get that. Where? So I've got Christian in my hand or my arms, and he comes up to me, and I'm standing by their doorway. Yeah. I get punched in the chest that time first, then hit. Then his dad was like, all right, no, we're not, we're not doing this. So then him and his dad get into a physical altercation too. Mm-hmm. Well, he his dad manages to call. He tried to get me to call the police department. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'll be dead. I was like, if I do that, I'll be dead. Like, there's, there's, no, I'm not going to do no it. No snitch. Sorry, I can't. Snitches get stitches. Better watch out. Pretty much. But then his dad got a hold of the police. <clears throat> and somehow Chris had backed him out to, like, their little porch area. Mm-hmm got his dad out there and locked the inside door on him. So now his dad is stuck so the house and I'm in the house. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm locked in. I have nowhere to go. So as soon as he sees me, I don't I was standing by the sink. That's when I got punched to my eye. Yeah. So you know, I kind of shook that off. I ran upstairs. I hid in the bathroom. Yeah. You got a black eye from that? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So I hit upstairs in the bathroom and I just remember saying, Christopher, like, we're done. Like, we're done. Like, I've had it. Like, fuck you. We're done. Like, that's it. Uh-huh. I'm doing this with you now. So then he's like, whatever, Amy. Like, just da 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 da. And I, I was like, just go to fucking bed. Leave me the fuck alone. I thought he had gone into the bedroom because I was going to come out of the bathroom and go back downstairs. Right. Well, that's when I got sucker punched to the right side of my skull. Okay. So that instantly knocked me down. Yeah, and this is all before we met you? No, this is. Okay. Guys all oh, this, this was time. over in that apartment or what? No, oh. this is when I was still a winger. This happened at his grandma's house. This incident. Oh, it was grandma's. Okay. I can name 500 other ones, but. This one's probably the most volatile. Mm-hmm. And so I guess it's some of this stuff is still kind of, it gets a little fuzzy. Like I remember bits and pieces sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I got to kind of um, back. One second here. Sorry about that, that folks. Um, um, we're right back at it, I suppose. Um, let me see my big ass stone piece. Whatever. Okay. Part two of this little Yeah, you say you got sucker punch right in the right side of your face? Yeah. It's side of my head. Yeah. Here. So, Lose a couple of brain cells. I don't know. I just wanted to see Yeah. Um, Sorry. Could have been much worse than that, but hey. So next part is we all end up in that bedroom. So I've got Christian sitting on my lap. Right. And he locks us in. He says if I open up that door, he's going to kill me. Those, those, that's the last sentence he told me before he went laid on the couch. So I'm sitting on the floor with, you know, Christian trying to calm my, not only keep myself calm, myself calm, but calm for Christian too. Yeah. All of a sudden. How old was he at this time? He was only like four, huh? Something like that. Yeah. A little over four. It's like three, four. Yeah. So all of a sudden, all, the next thing I hear is Poncho pounding outside that door, outside our room door. And I can hear, hey, Amy, this is the Polk County Police Department. Can you please open that door? I was like, um, yeah, about that. He says, if I do, I'm dead. Okay. okay well, what they say, then? He's like, 
does he have any weapons? I was like, I don't know. So they're like, okay, so here's the next thing. And you're like, we're going to break this door. He's like, he's either going to open it or we're going to break it down. Well, it was only like a butter knife in the door. So it didn't take a lot of shoving for them to yeah. be able to get that knife to fall. You guys must be native. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Extra security, 10 butter knives. So there's like six officers that come rushing in that room. They get me and Christian off the floor. And all their attention is focused on Christopher who's laying on that couch. Gotcha. And so they're, they're making sure he's not moving. So they get us out of the room. You know, he, he's laying there with no clothes on and a pair of underwear. That's the funny thing about it. Yeah. Because I can still kind of remember that. He's just got nothing on other than a pair of whitey tighties. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking sick, man. Fucking sick. Hopefully they didn't have, like, poop stains. I would have sucked to arrest that guy. <laughs> Sir, oh, you got poop stains back there. They get me and take downstairs. And I'm sitting in the kitchen there observing, you know, looking at all the grapes and stuff I've, I've gotten from our lovely entanglement, and looking at my neck and looking at the swelling going on in my face and the side of my head. They're getting, as they're assessing me, he's being, you know, escorted out to house. And, like, the look on his face is just, when I get out, you're dead. Like, you're just, you're dead. Yeah, probably the drugs, huh? Oh, call too. That I don't know. Yeah. Well, was it? He's arrested. Part that sucks is not only did the healing suck about it, so did the PTSD that I got from it. The constant worrying that I was being stalked everywhere. And I eventually did learn that he still was stalking me from inside the jail. Oh, okay. Was that PTSD? It did it affect you like when you were trying to sleep or anything like that? Or was it just yeah. the feeling that people were stalking you? Um the paranoia of government watched or feeling like I was being constantly watched. That that's that was pretty much normal. Yeah. But you know, the not being able to sleep, the flashbacks, yeah. the what do you do to try to cope with that nowadays? Or what did you do? You know, eventually you went worked and shit like that, right? Yeah. We got this guy. Yeah. You rub his tummy? This little shit. I always say Hey man, he has feelings. <laughs> He's a good boy. Yeah, was he a stress dog or what? Yeah, he was my emotional support. Yeah. Oh man, did you see that Puss in Boots movie? They had an emotional support dog in that one. <laughs> it's a good one. It just came out. I recommend that to anybody that's listening. Yeah. So <clears throat> you haven't. So had you stopped doing drugs at that point? Stuff like that. Yeah. After. Yeah. Well, that's good. Um, at least it didn't like take over your life or dictate anything that you did in life. You know what I mean? Uh, some people get past that, and you know, bad shit happens, right? Right. So, um, I guess you're one of the lucky ones in that sense, and also that you know he didn't go through with killing you or whatever. You know, I remember, I do remember some of those conversations that you would have um, on the you know on the phone because we lived in that one apartment across from MDV, and it was pretty, yeah. you know. He could be screaming on the phone and shit. I'm like, dude, you don't need to take that shit. You're over there crying and stuff. Um, you know, very sad shit, especially um, when you're just trying to hold your family together, I suppose. But, you know, whatever. I'm not, I was also not a part of that situation. So uh, I guess I only see one side of the story type shit. You know what I mean? So, you uh, see it. You had to go. You had to deal with it because obviously you lived with me. I think the only time that you ever really involved yourself is that night that you found the knife that I put in the bathroom. That I do remember you coming and asking me why there was a knife in the bathroom for. Mm -hmm. Why was there a knife in the bathroom? Because I was going to end it. Yeah. I was done with it. Was it serrated or was it? I don't remember. It was just a steak knife. I think. Steak knife. Yeah. <laughs> serrated. That would have sucked. It was just a fucking steak knife. Yeah. Well, good thing you didn't, because I wouldn't want to pot in on that. That would have sucked. Yeah. 
we <laughs> we had to walk into that one situation with a fucking uh, I ain't gonna say her name, but I'll just say Russian lady because she was a Russian lady when she was cutting her wrist, with fucking those eyebrow things. Fucking, she was going deep too. I still don't freaking understand that. Like you gotta have some willpower to use a fucking half inch blade to tear your shit off. Oh yeah, it was it was crazy. Um, I'll never forget that night. I barely touched that door and it just came open. So maybe it was God there. Who knows? I don't know if you believe in God, but you know. Maybe we saved a life. Who knows? But I don't think she learned a lesson. But I hope she does. You know, it is what it is. I, didn't they say that she like her parents were getting temporary custody of the kids because of that that night? Um, and then she fled, and so that they didn't like pursue her and stuff like that. So she could keep her family together is what I heard. Stuff like that. But I ended up seeing her like a few couple months later, and she gave me a big hug. Said, hug said thank you, but she was also drunk as shit with um, a few guys from locally around there. You know, obviously, you know what they were trying to get. But it is what it is. I mean, um, with alcohol, how about that? How were you, how were your battles with that? Um, you know what I mean? Because alcohol plays a big role in some like. For me, for well, drinking, uh, doing drugs and stuff, so. Wasn't as bad as what some people are, like, with mixing the pills and the alcohol. My butt just wanted fun. And okay. Too far. Too far. To the point where you, where people are finding me and bathrooms passed out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's a fact. Um, but, you know, sometimes some people let that take them over, you know what I mean? So, I know we did drink a lot. I know I did, too, and stuff like that. So, but I mean, it, it did take over, especially after me getting fired from that job. Yeah, we threw, like, a big party in jail. Which really, really probably didn't do very well for me. Yeah. But I did let it take over. Instead of going out and being, like... Dusting my shoes off and just be like, fuck that job. I'm going and finding a different one. I let myself fall into a depression. Yeah. yeah. And then it, you you were like yeah. jobless for a little while too, right? So Yeah. I mean it happened. But like I said, because I let myself fall into that depression with it. Instead of just like I said, dusting myself off. Like I should have, fixing my crown, yeah. and finding a job. Being an adult, yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's also it is hard looking for jobs sometimes, but you know, like you said, you can't just feel you just feel sorry for yourself for a little bit, but you know, fucking stand up, you big bastard. You know what I mean? Got to do some adulting. <laughs> so, um, but you seem to be on better terms nowadays, right? So, um, what led to you like kicking alcohol and you know? Help. What helped you through those times of darkness? You know what I mean, like psychologically and obviously physically. You know, because alcohol does fuck your body up. My mom. The night that I decided that, see, because what I haven't told your listeners is I did end up marrying that idiot. Mm -hmm. okay. We were married under a year, though. Yeah. I ended it June nineteenth of two thousand and eighteen. That's legally when I filed for my divorce papers. The court noted when I, you know, filled out our my restraining order on him that the separation began the moment that he was arrested. Okay. So he would like to claim, you know, that I cheated. Did not, because legally we're separated. A separation started way back in January, whatever. Well, I guess that, that depends on where you guys were emotionally and if you guys were still talking at that time done. period. I was done. So, mm -hmm. I think that I, I stuck it out. Well, I mean, period. then you don't you don't really have to bring up the point when they said that you guys were separated when you got incarcerated, yeah. I guess, too. I guess I allowed my mom and my dad to move in to my apartment for a little while because they were dealing with their own housing issues. Yeah. Were they out of Boston at this point? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, they were in Boston because they were at my apartment. So they were dealing with their housing issues from their house. So I let them stay with me because otherwise they had been living in the hotel. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I've got a 
I've got enough room. So I was like, whatever, you know, fine. Like, it's just me and Tegan here anyway. So mm-hmm. we let them come stay with us, which helped a lot, I think. I needed my mom. Yeah, no, for sure. So she was just all emotional and all that stuff, too, and just very supportive? Yeah. Yeah. What were some of the things that stuck out with how she supported you and how, I guess, you can go onward and share that with other people? Because, let's see, the I think, I think, you know, he and I had gotten into a confrontation where I was sitting on the deck that night, and I didn't want my parents to hear it. Because, mm-hmm. you know, usually when somebody is your abuser, they don't like hearing that it's done they will continue to try to oh. harass you you can also just hang up and like fuck that dude and but don't talk know. to him you know what i mean do you know me do i do that, do I do well, that? you're a puss <laughs> you're a wuss man you gotta well you you pr- you're probably like not like that anymore but you know what i mean this game is over this time you're gonna listen to what i've got to say dude like this we're done there's as a new way I want you back. Like you just you just need to stop. And then you hang up and like fuck you, bitch, and that's it. You know, because you don't have to put up with shit. You're an adult. So then my mom's idea was, well, let's go get you some. Let's. She's like, are you really sure you're done? I was like, yeah. She's like, well, then let's celebrate. So then I go and get my mics hard. Get who hard? I went and got. <laughs> Anyway, so we went down to the I drank them. She, I think she had like one with me. Otherwise, she stayed sober. Your mom don't drink too much. No. But or didn't. And I think I had like six or seven. Mm-hmm. Seven, eight. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know I was drunk. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know you got you used to get drunk off like two, so. Oh. <laughs> Pass it out bathroom and shit. It was way more than that. Anyway. Oh, man. Oh. It's got to wear long t-shirts. <laughs> you know, I have a brilliant idea. We were going to sit outside. We were listening to music. Me and my mom just had a fun night that night. It was good. But you know how my mom is. She'll always... Inc- <laughs> she may encourage the good things, but she'll also encourage you to go do something stupid. Yeah, that sounds like you guys. <laughs> it's good. So, I mean, I did a couple of stupid things. I, to get over the marriage and stuff, I I dated a couple, not real losers, but they weren't, like, not losers. They were just to pass the... What does that mean? I mean, they They were, but they were. Let's be honest, man. This this, this channel's all about honesty, bro. Let's get it. Like I was stupid, okay? Not only was he seeing me, but he was seeing some other girl on fuck. It's just neither one of us caught on. Yeah, all well, that shit happens, yeah. man. So, and then I started seeing somebody else that I worked with, and he, I thought he was much older than what he was. Yeah, I mean, I I tried to date an older chick once, and I was like, man, maybe girls be more mature when they're older. <laughs> uh, boy, was I wrong. You know what I mean? I thought a complete fucking weirdo okay, when I say weirdo I mean weirdo like our first did he spit in your Cheerios no he took me on a camping trip for me and his family <laughs> the first date yeah what the okay. fuck oh, next day you guys got married <laughs> no oh. they like couldn't get off my chairs <laughs> he had to like help me out and I'm like you realize like I thought my own legs they probably thought you were pregnant <laughs> they are like she must be pregnant <laughs> Oh man! And then he like want to go walk around the campground, like we're like at prom or some shit. And I'm like, yeah, dude. <laughs> no. And and the fucked up thing is, the entire time I was with him that night, like I was texting my current boyfriend. Yeah. I should just I should have dipped out. <laughs> That's what I should have done. Yeah, but he was gas. only your friend at that point, right? I need so. to some gas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that that line does work if anybody needs to use it. If you're, um, if you don't plan on staying, you just say, "Hey, you gotta get some gas," and they'll understand. <laughs> I done it. <laughs> call it Uber because I call it Uber. I think I left pizza in my <laughs> I think you could only get like minivan back then. <laughs> oh man. Call it Uber. 
Yeah, I suppose. But hey, dog, get yeah. Well, that's good that you're staying away from uh, the alcohol and all that jazz, um, meth and all that shit. You know, that's some ugly shit. And uh, okay. obviously, your kids don't need to see it. Um, good thing, you know, like, not to say it's good that you went through that experience with, um, you know, your, your first baby daddy. But, you know, I guess it taught you something. It made you a better person, stuff like that. You know what I mean? And um, okay. it helps carry you on to be a better person now and see better traits than um, somebody you might not have considered even being with, you know? So, um, life has its mysteries, I guess. I'm, yeah. ah, hey, man, I'm glad to see you guys are doing good. Happy for you guys. You know what I mean? Your son, how old is he now? Like, fucking 25? <laughs> 12. 12. Holy buckets, man. Getting old. Yeah. With a one-year-old little sister. Right, right. Um, and that, that's it, right? No more poop shooting kids, right? <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, how's he doing in school? He's good. Yeah, you able to help him with his homework, or does it look foreign? <laughs> they do all their shit on a computer nowadays. Like it's super crazy. Yeah, heard he's pretty smart though, right? So he is. That's good. He ain't talking to no girls or anything like that, huh? Not that I know of. I mean, we find pictures on his phone of big booty. Fortnite character. Well, at least, like, at least you know where he stands oh, at. Yeah. <laughs> Just ream him or out. Like, or he takes screenshots. Because, you know, like, Snapchat has, like, the TikTok reels or whatever. So if he finds somebody with a nice, thick booty. Yeah. He's learned how to, like, Does he discriminate against uh, gender? <laughs> no. Looks like guy buds, too. No. I think he's more into, like, Latin girls. It seems to be, like, that's where his... Almost like J-Lo. Interests are. Uh, I got you. Like big booties. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. I mean, I can appreciate a man with those kind of taste. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, any guy would do that, I guess. But, yeah, it is what it is. That's good for him. Um, uh, uh, shit. And uh, any kind of sports or anything like that? No? No, he's in band, though. Band? Okay. Musical instruments, huh? What's he play? The tuba? The saxophone. I believe. No. He was on the he was on the clarinet because he played Squidward. His- Shout out to Squidward. It's good. He was on that when he was in Bagley. But Bagley already had enough clarinet players, so they started him out on the saxophone. hmm And that's where he stays at today. He likes that a lot more. Oh, well, that's good. Saxophones are pretty dope. Pretty tough to play though, right? Yeah, they are. I've, yeah. I've listened to try. Better than a skin flute, I can tell you that now. <laughs> oh, man. Get it out of your prison pocket, buddy. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, right, well. Um, shit, man. Uh, I do appreciate you stopping by on the podcast. Um, you got any more words for anybody? Got any plugs or anything like that? No, you, um, nobody to follow you on any social media platforms or anything like that, like TikToks or something. I don't get that out. No, well, you don't have to, but if like I don't know, it's giving you a shout out. Anyways, you want to give him, anybody a shout out you think is gonna watch this? <laughs> Matt's watching. Matt. Matt said, "Whoop." <laughs> What's up, Matt? Yeah, my boy, Matty G. What's up? Maddie and I used to have fun times at work too. Yeah. Um, did you fall every day? Mr. What? They used to call him Wednesday back then. Yeah. Is that when he like woke up gay or? <laughs> no, but he used to, okay, so his white helmet, they, he had put a big W on it, so everyone just started, I think he got hired on a Wednesday, so everyone started calling him Wednesday. <laughs> okay. That's funny. Ask him, ask him about Wednesday. <laughs> oh, he'll hear you. <laughs> he'll, he's, he said he's going to watch it. So, um, <laughs> so uh, what a man. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I do appreciate you stopping by. Um, I'll post this as soon as I can. And um, like I said, I do appreciate the conversation with you. So, Peace out, guys. Have a good night. <laughs>